Having an attractive talent pool is one of the most important things for companies when choosing a new location. So how do countries create the right environment to attract, retain and grow that talent? Some of the answers can be found in this year's Global Talent Competitiveness Index and the authors of the report are with us today. Dr. Bruno Longvin, Executive Director of Global Indices and Professor Paul Evans, Academic Director of the Global Talent Competitiveness Index. Welcome to INSEAD Knowledge, gentlemen. Thank you, Jane. Nice to be here. Mm -hmm. So, Switzerland and Singapore are once again on top, but we've seen quite a lot of shuffling in the top ten. Can you explain the ranking and the changes this year? Well, indeed, it's quite striking that uh, those three countries, uh, Switzerland, Singapore and Luxembourg, are, are at the top. Uh, they've been there before. Uh, it's not surprising that uh, we should find there small countries, which are also rich countries. Geography and history uh, are taking their toll. Uh, among those three, we have two landlocked and one island. Uh, and indeed, uh, they have no choice. Uh, they have to be open economy. Uh, the openness uh, of an economy is clearly a critical ingredient to be talent competitive. Uh, these are countries who have played the game of globalization and played it well. One of the things this year which is very clear is the relationship that we discovered last year that we always knew about the relationship between talent, competitiveness and economic growth. It's very clear. And it's particularly clear among high-income countries where the relationship is exponential. I mean, that's confirmed by this year's report. Jane, you mentioned in your introduction that countries are becoming aware of the fact that having talent is what attracts multinational corporations. And it's very true. And there's growing awareness of this. For example, the Nordic countries are taking the lessons of Singapore and of Switzerland. That is that they've got to do a better job of attracting talent to maintain their position that they have among the top 20. So there are more variables in the index this year. What's changed from the ranking last year? Well, the model uh, proved very robust already last year, which was a good surprise because it was the first time uh, GDCI was being produced. Uh, but the audit uh, provided by the European Commission uh, confirmed that indeed it was a robust uh, model. So we felt no need to change it significantly this year. Yet we want GTCI to be a tool for action. Uh, this is why we always try to give it more granularity, more details, and indeed we've been able to increase significantly the number of variables uh, this year, almost a third uh, more variables compared to, to last year. In spite of that, the country coverage has not uh, changed much. Uh, we're still around 100. We have 93 uh, countries this year, and we hope that uh, the feedback we're going to receive this year will uh, allow us to uh, have an even better uh, GTCI next year. So the theme of this year's report is growing talent for today and tomorrow. What insights can you share? During the last 20 years, we've seen an explosion in tertiary education, that is university, higher level education, uh, right the way across the world. I mean, it's a six times, it's 600 percent increase over a 20 year period of time. China, the number of people graduating from universities or the equivalent, is six times up over 20 years. India, it's up 17 times, 1,700%. Um, now, I think the interesting, one of the interesting messages this year is that it's not just higher education which is important. We tend to neglect vocational education. Now, take Switzerland, the leading country, as an example. Getting people to think about employment becoming employable starts off in Swiss schools at age 12, thinking about my vocation. At age 15, over 70% of the Swiss young adolescents go on the vocational track, which is what's known as the apprenticeship track, which is where you combine practical work with a company or an organization with theory. You take the Swiss government, the ministers of the Swiss government, there are half of them who don't come up the, out of the university stream, they come out of the vocational stream uh, there. And so I think we have to take vocational education, that is employability, much more seriously. Yes, the, uh, clearly, as Paul underlined, the, the crucial concept when we look at talent management and talent competitiveness is the notion of employable skills. 
uh, there are too many people unemployed, especially among the young. Yet, if we want to address this issue, we have to look at the labor market, not only as it is today, but as it is likely to be tomorrow. And what we see today is that technology is changing radically a number of segments in labor markets. Uh, for instance, the ability to deal with huge amount of data and analyze them, known as the big data phenomenon, uh, is changing a number of the skills that the labor markets want. The same is true for the advent of interconnected services through broadband internet. Clearly, the way in which uh, talent will be mobilized, organized, and put together in teams across borders, across geographies, uh, is going to be radically different. And what we see is that the population that felt more immune to these changes, uh, the knowledge workers, the 250 million people who uh, have the most sophisticated kind of work, are being affected. Even their jobs, whether they are journalists, whether they are accountants, whether they are lawyers, is being radically affected by that. And these phenomena are not just phenomena that affect the more sophisticated economies, like OECD countries, like the US, like Western Europe or Japan, who have a high proportion of service workers. They are already concerns for those emerging economies who have been very big on the business processing offshoring activities, uh, typically India, but also Morocco, Tunisia, or Egypt, for example. Well, which countries have seen the most improvements, and how would you explain those improvements? Well, I'd, I'd single out one of the top 20 countries, which is Estonia, uh, which is now position number 19. And I'd just like to point out that, for example, Estonia is in a higher ranking position than, for example, France at number 23. China continues to increase its competitive position. It's number 41 on the rank. And you see that China is becoming stronger in the area of the creative, innovative global knowledge skills. Perhaps another country to single out might be the Philippines, which has moved up in the rankings uh, now to a solid position around number 70. So for some key takeaways, how do countries nurture, retain and grow their talent? Bruno, perhaps. Well, one of the, the lessons we, we draw from uh, this year's uh, report is that uh, talent attracts talent. If you want to be talent competitive, you have to be a magnet for talent. And that includes diversity. You don't target a specific kind of talent or for or any specific sector. You want to be a place where talented people feel comfortable. Uh, they like to live uh, where you want to attract them and they like to work and deliver value to them. Diversity requires openness. Uh, you cannot plead diversity if you're not open to trade, to investment, to immigration and to new ideas. And if we look at the champions we have this year, uh, indeed we see them as great champions of openness. Um, globalization, just like climate change, is happening a lot faster than we expected. And we have to prepare our children, the next generation, at a very early stage to build up the talent that they need, that this world will need. And it starts off at schools at a very early age, not just preparing them with the knowledge, but preparing them with the interpersonal skills, the team skills, the digital skills, the learning how to learn that tomorrow's generation is going to need uh, in order to maintain our level of economic growth. Paul Evans, Bruno Lovin, thank you very much for joining us on NCR Knowledge today. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, thank you Jane.